to you know a fast food place and driving through and pick up my meal. Mm -hmm. Well, that's <laughs> by any stretch of imagination healthy uh, because we know that the caloric intake for each food that you buy from the fast food place is going to have be much higher than if you cook exactly the same thing at home. Plus, you're going to have much more salt intake. Mm -hmm. And uh, of course, you're not going to buy just that. You're going to have some side dish, which most of the time is not the healthiest out there, right? French fries, right? And ketchup. And unfortunately, you know, the diet these days, 84%, statistically speaking, 84% of our diet American diet is processed food and meat. Mm. 84%. That leaves about 11% for fruits and vegetables and mm. nuts. 11%. Well, you know, no wonder there's so much disease out there. I mean, there are about 200,000 death, uh, deaths from cancer related to diet and physical activity, lack of, lack thereof. 200,000. Cancer deaths from that. I mean, why? Why there's so much, you know, weight problem, obesity even in children? Why? Who grew up with, you know, overweight children? I didn't. I've never seen one. <laughs> if a kid was, you know, a little bit, you know, chubbier in school, everybody made fun of him when I was growing <laughs> up. Right? Right. And so um, now it's a problem because there's diabetes in these children, right? And their fatty liver, and their you know the kids at 18 that do bypass surgeries. This I mean this is crazy. Mm. And there's cancer. I mean, how many of us they you know fundraising drive or contributed to Make a Wish Foundation or to St. Jude? It's very sad. Mm -hmm. It's really very sad. So we want to put a dent in this. Mm -hmm. That's what we're trying to do. So starting small, you know, mm -hmm. it's a small office, but you know and. Thank you for you for being here, all of you. But that's what we're gonna to talk to you about because it's a ripple effect. I mean, we hope at least that it's a ripple effect. Mm -hmm. We talk to you and you talk to others and so forth and so on. You, we want to impact lives. We want to change the trajectory of this um, because it's not going in the right direction, that's for sure. So I will uh, let Christopher, you know, talk about this. He's a fountain of knowledge, so I'm sure he'll be like... <laughs> um, I've, I've, I've actually helped um, non-type 1 diabetics reverse their disease, so we know that's possible. So the ADA says that it's a progressive and chronic disease because they go off of drugs, and no drug is ever going to carry a type 2 diabetes. And that's what this group is about. It's about teaching you how to get off drugs and how to get healthy again, because you don't have to be on drugs the rest of your life. It's been proven, like for the last hundred years. In fact, um, in 19, 1916, uh, there was a doctor that specialized in diabetes, and they did fasting, and they did low carb diets, and they were able to reverse diabetes back then. Insulin was uh, insulin was discovered in 1921. Then he found out that insulin works for type one diabetics, and it seems they work for type one. Then he tried it on type twos. Type twos are not supposed to be taking that insulin in the first place. They have an insulin problem. They produce too much insulin where type ones don't produce any insulin. Mm -hmm. So that's why they need insulin. So a lot of it is diet. Most of it is diet. It's lack of exercise, lack of movement. When you move, you have a lot of muscles. You have 222 muscles in your body. So when you're moving, your body is using all these calories and it keeps up. It's called insulin sensitivity. So the muscles are very insulin sensitive. When you move, when you don't move, you become insulin resistant. And that's part of what type two diabetes is. Um, the thing that Dr. Kirja was nailing on right now was the food supply. The food supply back in the 50s obviously was much cleaner. The soils were much uh, more nutrient dense. Today, they we're over cropping. We're um, using pesticides. Pesticides are actually are derivative from World War II as a nerve gas, and that's how it works. Is when the insect goes on the, the fruit or vegetable, it gets zapped with the uh, nerve gas from the pesticide and it dies. It does the same thing to us. It attacks our nervous system, but we're much bigger insects. So it takes it a longer and longer and longer time, but it does do the same thing. It attacks our nervous system and it starts deteriorating our bodies. So the thing that I wanted to bring up is I never visually saw 
until we decided we're going to show what uh, six to ten servings looks like. I never knew it was this much food. I mean, this is, it weighs six pounds. That's <laughs> what you have to eat every single day. You have to eat this to be able to eat six to ten servings ser a day. This is why we have a problem. We're not eating enough of what we should be eating, and what we are eating is processed foods that we should not be eating because it's convenient. So the thing that I was fascinated by was how much a serving is. Uh, each of these is one serving. This is one serving of cucumber, one serving of uh, pepper, one serving of tomato. So that's what constitutes as being the uh, 10 servings of fruits and vegetables over here. Also, most people think these as being vegetables. They're fruit. Mm -hmm. Anything with a seed in it is fruit. This is a fruit. So when people think of fruit, they think of bananas, papaya, pineapple, because they all, they're all sweet. Everybody wants that because it's sweet. Our bodies can crave three things, sugar, <coughs> fat, and um, sugar, fat, and salt. Mm. That's why peanut M&Ms are the most satisfying for everybody, because mm. it satisfies all three of our cravings. This doesn't satisfy all three of our cravings. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so we, we are a, a species that we look for calorie-dense foods. We've always done that from the beginning of time because we haven't really really been able to eat the way that we eat today up until about maybe 100 years ago. Before that, we didn't eat very often. We didn't eat eight times a day. In fact, eating eight times a day is what's killing us. We should only be eating maybe two or three at the most times per day, even diabetics. Diabetics, and that's another talk that I'll be getting into on a different day, but today we're gonna to focus on uh, supplementation. And Seeing how hard it is to eat something like this every day, every day to get all the micronutrients, which are the vitamins and minerals that our bodies need, the enzymes to keep us healthy, to keep the cells functioning properly. This is what we need to be eating. The meat, the protein is, is another macronutrient. This is the um, starches and sugars is carbohydrates. So these are all sugars pretty much. And there's a different types of sugars. There's fast acting sugars called simple sugars, and there's complex sugars. These are complex. It takes longer for the body to digest it, so the insulin comes up slower and comes down slower. Whereas um, when you eat like uh, sugar, sugary foods, ice cream, donuts, the insulin jacks up and it plummets down and you're hungry again. So you eat again, jacks up, goes back down. So you're up and down, up and down all day long. So this is why most people want to eat about five or six times a day because they get that sluggish feeling. So they need a little pick-me-up, either coffee, which is fine. I have no problems with coffee. but. They're reaching for the Cokes. There's 40 grams of sugar in a Coke. There's mm -hmm. one teaspoon for every four grams of sugar. So 40 grams, that's 10 gram, ten teaspoons of sugar in four, <laughs> 12 ounces. And when I did a talk and I actually took a glass of water and I put 10 teaspoons of sugar in and I gave it to a guy who does, he drinks like eight or nine Cokes a day. I'm like, go ahead and drink this. And he's like, that's gross. I'm like, you're doing it eight times a day though when oh. you're drinking this. So when you're like, when you become aware of things, I think that's the first step is mm. to make changes. You have to become aware of the problem. And that's what we're trying to do is we're trying to get you guys aware of what's going on, why you might have type two diabetes or being overweight and not being able to lose the weight. It's because you have to become aware of what you're doing. And once you get through that, then um, things can change. I mean, <laughs> I have a really interesting story. I bought one of my clients a, a weight, <laughs> I mean, a um, scale for Christmas. Mm -hmm. He was mad. <laughs> 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 He's overweight. But this thing like, measures a bunch of different things. It measures visceral fat, which is the fat that causes all the problems. It's in the midsection area around your organs and everything. That's the fat you need to get rid of. It's not the fat in your cheeks or your legs. It's this fat right here. So he has a belly on him. He had, right, exactly. And the harder it is, the more visceral fat there is in there. So he had, um, he had cancer. It was intestinal cancer. So that's why he started seeing me in the first place. So he, doesn't, he can stay away from that. So he texts me and said, I'm really mad at you. <laughs> Why would you buy me a scale? I'm like, because there's different things on there that it measures. It measures a bunch of things on there. Water intake, uh, lean body mass, all these things. The thing that I told him I needed him to watch was the visceral fat. So he's had that scale for think, about uh, two months. His visceral fat was on the scale. <clears throat> it was 16. It should have been a 9. 9 is... Um, is the cutoff and being okay, and then it starts going into high alert, starting to get into metabolic syndrome and diseases. So he said that really helped him because now he can like gauge it and he 
he started losing the weight and he's kind of like looking for it every day to see the number go down. So once he became aware that he's got a problem, instead of me just telling him he's got a problem, he can see it for himself. He can see the numbers. Numbers speak volumes for people. So once you saw that, he was able to start making some changes. Where do you get that what kind of scale? Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, Fit Track. Fit Track. Fit Track. T R A K, I believe. Yeah, so it measures all these different things on how much water you have in you. And every morning, I go on the bathroom scale, see where I'm at, and it lets me know if I didn't drink enough water, I bump up my water for the next day. How does that know that? Like, I don't It understand. goes through electrodes, through your feet, it goes there's an electric current through you. Okay. And it measures all these things. Very fancy. Are they expensive? They're like at 145. Okay. Yeah, but if you're interested in. Uh, that's how I keep track of myself. When I, the problem is people say, oh, you know, it's only a pound, I'm okay. It's only a two pounds, right. I'm okay. But those one or two pounds keep going and going and going, and pretty soon you're 30 pounds. So if you <laughs> catch it at the beginning, then you can start reversing and stay stable, and that's what I use it for. As soon as I see two pounds, three pounds, I'm like, okay, I don't need to eat as much. Yeah, I mean, today I saw a patient, she gained 26 pounds in, like, since July. Mm. They come and, on slow. And <laughs> she didn't realize it. I said, you see, had you weigh yourself every week, because nobody says every day. I mean, you know, you can every day, but, you know, at least once a week if you weigh mm -hmm. and you have not lost or maintained whatever it, you need to do. But if you have not done something positive, then you have to, you know, speed it up a notch. Mm -hmm. You know, that that's, it has to be, because otherwise, you know, oh, it's something loose, oh, it fits good, I don't know. And again, seeing yourself every single day in the mirror, you do not realize mm -hmm. the pounds creeping up. You don't. You don't. Mm -hmm. And I mean, everybody invariably, I mean, some people say, oh, yeah, I know I gained weight. But invariably, everybody says, oh, really? <laughs> I can't believe that. <laughs> Especially after a certain threshold, you know, because at the beginning, you kind of see it, you feel it. But once you're at a certain threshold where, uh, a pound here, a pound there, you don't see it, mm -hmm. you're not gonna know until it's big trouble, you know, and yeah. Your waist is actually your best indicator. You can do, there's different measurements that you can do. The most, the easiest one is that your waist should be half the inches of your height. So I'm 6'2", so that's 74 inches. My waist should be less than 37 inches. Mm -hmm. That's one of the easiest ways to detect health. Can you say that again? Your waist should be half the inches of your height. So if you're five, five, that's 65 inches, your waist should only be uh, 32. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I'm 5'10", I'm 38, I'm 40. Yeah, 40, you're, you're, you're 40 waist. We, we got a little more in danger zone here. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, but it, it comes off. I mean, it's not as hard as you think. It's, uh, it's, you just need to be educated. So it, let's face it, the food industry is out there to make money. Mm -hmm. There's 27 or 28 different names for sugars, and those sugars are what causes all the problems. It's what causes the type 2 diabetes, what causes weight gain, it's what causes cancers, so hypertension. I'm type 2 diabetes. I'm sorry? I take metformin. Okay. Yeah. So you, is you one of your patients? No. Oh, no. You're the patient. Mm -hmm. <laughs> she, she dragged me along. So I think, <laughs> thank you for coming. Thanks for dragging me. Thanks for coming. She told me the doctor said, bring your friend. And I, at it. <laughs> <laughs> I think the problem is that America is health illiterate, and it's because mm -hmm. of food company. It's all about money. So, they're, um, so True Diabetes is a multi-billion dollar company. They're not going to give it up. Mm -hmm. It's like they know that it's reversible, but they keep telling you. All the government agencies say the same thing because government agencies are in their pockets. It's how they get the funds for their own operations. So mm -hmm. they're not going to cut off their hand from that. So, and Dr. Visha can't say anything because I'm not licensed as a doctor. <laughs> I can. I'm not going to lose anything. But at least I'm telling the truth. Yeah. You do your own research and you can find out for yourself. I've been doing this for 25 years, so I know quite a bit. No, but it's true. I mean, you know, the natural um, options are not on the radar of anybody big. 
mm-hmm. because they don't make money. They don't make money out of a supplement, you know, or you know, fruit or vegetable put together or something. You don't. You know, you make money off of you know. Yeah. You need three, four diabetes medications. You need chemotherapy. You need you know whatever. Those are the big money makers. So I totally agree that pharma is a, you know I mean again this, this whole come on I mean in, in the airport by exa- you know for example. Why is it horrible food in the airport? Why do we have to have, a, you know, literally like something like this, a stand like this, always candy, 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 candy like this all around, full of different colors, and all the kids like, oh! Mm-hmm. And then you wonder why cavities, why obesity, why diabetes, and so forth, and so forth, you know? And what's advertised on TV, right? You know, a dollar, a dollar a burger, a Big mm-hmm. Mac is a thousand calories. Who needs that at one meal? Mm-hmm. Nobody. <laughs> French fries and ketchup are not vegetables. <laughs> They're not part of the <laughs> vegetable intake. No. One of the talks that I gave, I talked about processed foods and the Big mm-hmm. Mac was part of it. I bought a Big Mac about a month before my talk when I was hired for it. And I put it in a Tupperware, but I left the lid off. And the day of my talk, a month later, it was still the same day that it was when I bought it. That means there's no nutrients in it. Nutrients will die off and they'll get moldy. There's no nutrients in it. So it's all empty calories that you're eating. And a Big Mac is like 1,000 calories. Mm-hmm. That goes, like, and that goes down pretty quick, doesn't it? <laughs> no, it's not good. People are having it all like this. It goes down like that. It tastes good. <laughs> no, it's your killer. It's your energy. It's your energy. <laughs> Again, 11 percent, you know, uh, veggies, fruits, beans, nuts, and out of this 11 percent, people put French fries, the ketchup. <coughs> that's because that's a vegetable, vegetable, isn't it? Mm-hmm. So this is even less than 11 percent of the diet. Wow. Okay, whole grains 4 percent, uh, animal products 32 percent, 53 percent is processed foods. So. Again, I always teach my patients, go in the store around the walls, mm-hmm. outside walls. You don't go through the aisles unless you need, I don't know, uh, flour or spices or something. Mm-hmm. But there's it all around. You go for produce, you go for you know, your milk, your meat, your you know, basic stuff. Mm-hmm. Basic stuff. Let's go, down to, come, go back to basics, you know, like you know, 100 years ago were healthier. Then they were walking more. Then they were more active. Mm-hmm. Right. Well, we didn't have cars. And everything rode a bike. We worked right. in the fields. We did manual labor. We don't do any of that anymore. Burned we're sitting all, all day long. Yeah. There was a stat I read. We sit or lay down 95% of the day. We're either sitting or laying down. Mm. That just means we're just, we don't need many calories for that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> so another thing that I wanted to bring up is that people are so hooked on this fat is bad for you. And that all actually all started from a doctor by the name of Ansel Keys back in 1956. He did this study called the Seven Countries Study. It was actually, he did 22 countries, but he cherry-picked what he wanted. He wanted to prove that fat causes heart disease and, uh, and some other diseases. So he went all over these countries, and the government actually funded him. Our government and a bunch of other governments around the world funded this study to do it. He did it. It took like 20 years to do it. In the 70s, he came out with the evidence saying that fat makes people fat and it also causes cardiovascular disease and heart disease. So he brought that to the government. That's when the government started urging us to lower our fat intake and the carb to increase our carbs. So what happened is that the food industry came in and remember the three things our bodies crave is fat, salt, and sugar. So if the fat's gone, the only thing you can do is bring up the sugar. So they did that for carbohydrates and that's when obesity started skyrocketing and type two diabetes follows in parallel. When uh, the weight goes down, diabetes goes down. Kind of, it's a weight related issue. So, uh, what they found that's causing all the problems, the heart attacks and the, um, and the cardiovascular disease, is actually refined carbohydrates and sugar. So, sugar is like crystal, right? When you take it out of the, out of the bag, it's crystal. When it goes through your blood veins, it actually scrapes the vein, the, the blood stream, and it tears it. So, what your body does is it takes in cholesterol and saturated fat. Patches it up like you do a drywall with um, paste Spackle. or whatever. Spackle. <laughs> Spackle. Oh. Spackle. Spackle. Exactly. <laughs> 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 so it patches up the hose with that stuff. 
And when they did all these studies, they said, well, saturated fat and cholesterol is causing all these problems. But sugar's been long gone, and saturated fat and cholesterols are doing their job trying to keep us from uh, this, from dying, basically, because you have tears in your bloodstream, the blood goes out, and you have all oh. sorts of problems then. Oh. So it's not, the, it's not the fat that causes the problems. So we need to, you can do whatever you want. But what my successful people have been doing is they increase their fat, they decrease their carbs, and keep protein at a moderate level. So they're eating like 70% fat in their diet. And they're really <laughs> at Another visual. You're full of visuals today. <laughs> and so you can see it all climbed over huh? here. <laughs> yeah, wow. It's all sugar. But it's fat. Fat. So saturated fat, fat is actually a healthy about? fat? Saturated fat. Mm -hmm. It's a <laughs> natural saturated, saturated fat. Trans fat is the one you have to worry about. So peanut butter is a prime example. Everybody knows what peanut butter is. You can open up that jar and that peanut butter will be the same 10 years from the day you bought it because the saturated fat keeps it creamy and it keeps it preserved. Saturated fat is what clogs your arteries, so stay away from that. But the um, monounsaturated fat, polyunsaturated fat, and saturated fats are the fats that we should be consuming. Natural fats, so avocados, nuts, as many nuts as you want. But with that, remember that fat calories, there's nine calories per gram of fat, whereas there's only four grams for uh, carbohydrates. So you have to be careful of that. There's twice as many grams, uh, calories rather, per gram. So you have to be careful with uh, the weight. <laughs> is uh, almond butter better than peanut butter as far as the fat content? Yeah. Almond butter is better yeah. um, for several reasons. Mm -hmm. And peanuts, not only some people are allergic to them, but also peanuts are very high in omega-6s. Omega-6 is an oh. uh, inflammatory compound. Omega-3 is, is our, our bodies are one big negative feedback system. So for every system, there's one side and it's up, there's another side, like a seesaw. So one is up, one, the other one's down. So when it's off, the other one's on, okay? So the omega-6 is, is an inflammatory compound, whereas omega-3s is an anti-inflammatory compound. So we need to bump up the omega-3s and reduce the omega-6s. We still need, um, need omega-6s, we still need inflammatories because when you cut yourself, you need that blood to coagulate, so you need some inflammation. So some inflammation is good, but a lot of inflammation is not good. So we need to bring all that stuff down and get the omega-3s in there. And that's fish. Fish, salmon's yeah, great. Salmon. Nuts, Sorry, lots of nuts. Have tonight. Did I eat peanut butter or not? No. no. I would not. No? No. Almond no. butter. Have you tried no. that? It's no, pretty close. Almond mm -hmm. butter is pretty yeah. good. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sounds delicious. And if you're looking for something kind of sweeter, cashew <coughs> butter is a little sweet. So mm -hmm. that might crave, that might uh, settle the craving. Would you have to go to a health food store for that? Whole Foods has it. Whole Foods? Yeah. And it's not, it's not outrageously priced. Mm -hmm. Or Trader Joe's. Pete's Trader has Trader it too. Joe's yeah. Yeah. yeah, I can't go wrong there. They have almond, and their prices are good. Okay, we'll try it. Everything's going to be, you know, the reason why some of us are in the position that we're in is because of what we're doing. So if we want to change, we've got to make changes. And we're not asking you to make a thousand changes at one time. Mm -hmm. Let's do one change today. Let's mm -hmm. do another change two weeks from now. We'll go slow. Yeah, good idea. But bacon is not one of the... Bacon, bacon, bacon. I do eat a lot of bacon. <laughs> But I don't I don't do bread. I mean I, my carbs I I'll even either, either eat uh, fat and protein or I'll eat carbs and protein. And one of our talks that we'll do later on is we'll talk about carb cycling. Yeah, because I eat bacon, I eat a lot of bread. Right, so <laughs> I we have different opinions. I eat a lot of bacon. <laughs> <laughs> but without the bread. You no, a lot of yeah, bread you gotta, with it. Yeah, I'm not so, much of a bread guy. I used to eat a lot of bread, but Brands when I started doing all my research, I found out how horrible it is. And the other thing is, European countries have the same foods as us from the same companies, and they're completely made differently. They don't have all the crap that we have in there. And we're supposed to be a sophisticated country. Okay, I got another question, because I have a friend that's a diabetic, and, and I know you were saying to lose weight and that'll help it go down, but she already skinny, so, when she she done lost a lot of weight, but she's still a diabetic. So, how does that work? So, if I lose seventy or eighty pounds, the diabetes go away. 
Okay, diabetes is a sugar problem in the liver. The liver, the liver does a lot of stuff. And when, when you eat, that's a different topic. Um, it's a visual oh, thing. Yeah. It makes things. <laughs> when you eat, the calories get metabolized and they go into. We have seventy-five trillion cells to make up our body. So when, once all those cells are full, then they go into our liver and our muscle tissue. It's called glycogen, and that stores about a day's worth of calories in our liver and our muscle tissue. And as the energy in our cells deplete, then our body starts converting the, the glycogen back into glucose and goes into the cell. Okay, it's mm -hmm. called gluconeogenesis. Okay, then once that's depleted, then it goes into the fat cells and start using fat as a primary uh, energy source. So we have to deplete the glycogen from the liver and the muscle tissue so we can start burning more fat. And with diabetes, uh, Roy Taylor, a doctor out in New England, in uh, England, uh, Newcastle was the name of the university, he found that 0.5 grams, that's a half a gram of fat in the pancreas, too much of that, is what causes the diabetes because then the eyelids don't work properly for the insulin to work properly. So once you get rid of the fat, then you get rid of the diabetes. And you also brought up a good point because I always thought that diabetes is an obesity disease. Yeah. There could be skinny people out there. What happens is that I modeled for a long time too and there's a lot of skinny fat people out there. <laughs> so when you touch their arm, it's like jello. There's no muscle whatsoever in there. So each of our bodies, we have a body fat set point, it's called. So each of our bodies, and we're all individuals, so I can handle more body fat than other people can before I start coming into problems, whereas other people can handle less body fat before they have problems. The skinny people, the people that look skinny that have type 2 diabetes, they're beyond their fat level. They can't carry as much body fat as other people can. So that's why they can get type 2 diabetes. There's about 10% of those kind of people. Mm -hmm. But if you have, if you are overweight and you have diabetes, for sure, you know this. You get rid of diabetes or it improves tremendously if you lose the weight. I mean, we know this, right? No, we know this. Not only diabetes, most diabetics have multiple problems, hypertension, hypercholesterolemia. I wrote a book, in, uh, one of the chapters I designated to weight gain and the um, health infections that come with that. So I gained 40 pounds and during that I did a bunch of blood work along the way. And along with that, as my weight went up, I got high cholesterol problems, I got hypertension problems, uh, my A1C was a 6.3. All these problems came up, and as I dropped the weight, everything went right back down again. Mm -hmm. so, and the, unfortunately, I can do that, I can do it very quickly, because I'm, I'm pretty lean year round. But people that have been overweight for a long period of time, it's gonna take longer. I mean, I did it in a short period of time, whereas other people that have been overweight for 20 years, whatever, it's going to take them two or three, maybe four times longer than what it took me. Okay, our bodies are a homeostasis machine. They want to stay in equilibrium at all times. My body wants to stay at 205 pounds at all times. If I eat too much, I'll gain 210. But then other hormones in my body shut off and turn on, and um, it forces me not to be hungry. So um, leptin kicks in and ghrelin shuts off, and that's how we eat less calories. So that's how we're able to maintain our weight pretty much year round because they're the hormones that are adjusting inside our bodies to stay at a particular weight. So you get drastically reduced calories and you lose calories, but then you're gonna get ghrelin, which is um, that growling in your stomach. When you hear that, that's your body producing ghrelin. That's your I'm hungry hormone. There's multiple other ones too, but those all kick in and they're forcing you to try to find something to eat. It's a defense mechanism, survival mechanism that we've had for millions of years. Our bodies haven't changed. So, so your food supply has. So your stomach growled, and then you, they, they, they think you won't eat then. Grayling kicks in. I'm hungry. Feed me. <laughs> Why I didn't mind growling now. I just ate it. I guess it did. and do stuff, you're gonna need less calories or less food or something. No, it's not true, you're gonna need more. So it's in a, in a way, if you exercise, you can maybe eat a little bit more. But then, you know, but exercise is very healthy for you. So, you know, how many people walk three miles a day mm. in whatever shape or form? Raise your hands. Excellent. Sometimes. <laughs> 
capital letters. Yeah. That's three miles a day, right? A really good investment you can make is getting a Fitbit. Mm -hmm. And it's got the calorie at the uh, step counter on there. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, all my clients have it. They, they have to hit 10,000. Otherwise, they come in to my, um, into the session with me at the end of the session at the sign of 10,000. They're on a treadmill for another half hour until they get there. Mm -hmm. So I'm very adamant Checks. about that. That's 10,000 steps is five miles. You can burn 300 calories per mile, walking at an average 3.0 miles per hour. That's what the average person walks, rather. So you can burn a lot of calories that way, just walking. So you don't need any money, you don't need a gym, you don't need anything, you just have to eat your two legs and start going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, most people, you know, they invest in gym memberships and then they don't use them. Oh, I'm too busy, I paid for it and I didn't go. Well, why didn't you buy it? You knew, or buy ellipticals or treadmills and they sit there, use that hangers or something. <laughs> Well, I'll be honest, if I had a home gym, I wouldn't use it either. It's too convenient. So um, getting to the to the gym is half the battle. It's mentally preparing me for mm -hmm. what I need to do. So I think that it's, I mean, if, if it works for you, it works for some of my clients. It doesn't work for other clients of mine. But uh, everybody's different. I mean, yeah. it could be like a glorified uh, hanger, clothes hanger. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. But, and... Reducing oxidative stress. Mm. Oxidative stress, mm. yes. Free yeah. radicals. Free radicals. I mean, we just breathe, right? Just by breathing, we produce free radicals. These are like abnormal molecules, basically, which kind of attack practically your DNA, your cells, generally speaking, and there is more damage. And that's how things start forming, more inflammation, more maybe mutations, and so forth and so on. That over what 90 90 percent of illnesses are from oxidative stress mm -hmm. basically so the only way to fight this is with antioxidants and uh, those are your antioxidants those are your fruits and vegetables are your antioxidants those will keep that fight going if that um, and you need a lot of them and fruits also <laughs> not just you know <laughs> when you buy your your vegetables, and again, these are fruits, so mm -hmm. you don't need a banana for a fruit. <laughs> yeah, no. When you buy this stuff, look for the darkest colors, because what these are is phytonutrients. It's what protects the vegetable. Try to get organic. Organic, we don't really know how organic organic is, but um, it's better than conventional, no matter what. And it's only a few cents <laughs> more. So. These, uh, these are loaded, polyphenols is, uh, when you say that olive oil is good for your health, they're talking about the, it's called polyphenols. It's a, uh, it's a compound inside vegetables and fruits also. And it fights those free radicals. The free radicals, as I previously said, when you take a breath, you're creating free radicals. It's creating stress in your body. When you work out, when you, uh, when you eat, anytime, all day long, every second of the day, your body is creating free radicals. And most people aren't, doing anything near this. I don't think, my brother doesn't need a vegetable. I don't think he knows what a vegetable is. <laughs> <laughs> and he's, he looks twice his age. Uh, free radicals make you age. They give you, you know, the black circles on your eyes, the saggy skin, it's wrinkles, uh, diseases, type two diabetes is because of free radicals, uh, cancer, uh, hypertension, all these other diseases are from free radicals. So we have to fight those free radicals with the other word for free radicals is oxidative stress or oxidation. The opposite of oxidation is antioxidation, antioxidants. So that's how we fight all that. You can actually grow older, younger, if that makes sense. You can slow down the aging process mm -hmm. drastically. Mm -hmm. And not everybody's into aesthetics of how they look, but feeling. How do you feel? Do you feel healthy? That'll help you feel better. Yeah, and I Makes think everybody, sense. if they can, you know, you know, the, because the weight, okay, damages, you know, things inside them, diabetes and all that, but also arthritis, right? You're much more likely to develop arthritis if you're sedentary and you're overweight. So, and that's not reversible, unfortunately. Mm -hmm. and, uh, once the damage is done, it's done. There's no cartilage restoration here. Mm -hmm. It's shots, you know, or surgery, basically. Mm -hmm. Um, but 
course, you have to prevent those things. I'm a media. What's a good media? I, I, I just love me. I love a good steak. You're my kind of guy. <laughs> I'm a meat guy, too. I'm a meat and potato kind of guy. <laughs> I eat everything. I yeah, eat. I eat But that. everything, you know what? It's all in moderation. Okay. In moderation, anything over, nothing too much of anything is good for you. Mm -hmm. Nothing, everything in moderation. So um, if you want, one of the places I go to is called Tango Sur. They're yeah. Argentinian restaurant. They're known yeah. for their meat. Yeah. So they get, for 30 bucks, <laughs> you wow, get these huge plates like this big and that yeah. big. You get two of them. Oh, and, um, of so, <laughs> I mean, I, I used to eat both of them until I started getting a little more educated about some stuff. <laughs> so now I just eat one. And I leave the other one for the next day or a couple days later. So, but um, everything in moderation. So, unfortunately, I, I'm really hard with the type 2 diabetes. Sugar's got to be eliminated as much as possible. Those 26 names of sugar that will be, uh, we can do at a different time. I'll be, uh, most people don't know how to read a food, um, um, food label on the back of the package. Most people don't know the numbers in the main. So I teach my clients and I teach other people what those mean and what you become aware of what is inside that package. And you're like, oh, I really don't need that. There's other alternatives. An alternative for um, like olive oil, everyone thinks that they just get any kind of olive oil, it's healthy. What happens is you want a dark green bottle or a black bottle because enzymes denature, the enzymes inside the antioxidants mm -hmm. denature, meaning that they die from light, oxygen, um, your age, and there's a fourth one, I forget what the fourth one is. So you want a dark bottle and you want extra virgin olive oil. What about grape seeds oil? I'm not familiar with that is one. That one? Okay. Because I've been using olive oil for so long. But a lot of people think, and it's also touted by a lot of different agencies, that canola oil is good. Mm. Canola oil is horrible. It's mm. uh, a rapeseed oil, and, it's, and rapeseed stinks. Mm. Horrible. So it's processed over and over and over. And the more it's processed, the more omega-6s are in it, which means more inflammation. So you don't want to get any kind of vegetable oil. You don't want to get canola oil. Um, there's several other ones. Safflower, safflower oil, sunflower oil. So a lot of um, these processed foods, that's what they use because it's a cheap ingredient. And they keep their profit margins really high. So you don't want any of those. You want to get the... Uh, Corn oil. Corn oil is the worst. If, well, yeah, they're all up there. Corn oil. <laughs> so any, any vegetable oil, if it's a vegetable, you don't want it. Coconut so they, oil? You, have to it. you know, corn is used for like 20,000 different things. Yes. Mm -hmm. right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Gasoline being one of them. Yeah. And if you choose meat, at least grass fed, yeah. you know, right. animals, not like your corn fed animals. Or right. You are, you're not what you eat, you're what the animal ate. So if the animal ate corn, GMOs, that's what's going inside your body. If the animal was stressed, in, like in conventional farms, you're eating that stress. The stress created free radicals and inflammation, that's what's going into your body. So whatever that animal or that plant had is what's going inside your body. 80% mm -hmm. of, of antibiotics are prescribed, are given to animals. 80%. That means the antibiotics going inside you. And antibiotics, the thing with antibiotics is once you um, you get a disease and take the antibiotic, your body is, is depending more on the antibiotic. The antibiotic becomes less efficient. So you need to have something stronger than the antibiotic that you had once before. And we're running out because um, a lot of, and I'm not saying you are, I'm saying a lot of doctors are over-prescribing mm -hmm. antibiotics. Mm -hmm. Yeah, health, um, health is really, there's a lot about it. There's a lot to learn. Um, and the reason why I'm doing this is because I'm